please write down. Okay. Do you swear that the, that the testimony you are about to give in the case now before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Have a seat. Good morning, sir. Comfortable and speak into the mic, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Could you state and spell your name for the record, please? Yes. My name is uh, Terry, T E R R Y, Howard, H O W A R D, Sanderson, S A N D E R S O N. Thank you. Now, Terry, this is the fifth day of trial. We started last Tuesday. Um, you haven't. You weren't here much last week, were you? Not at all. In the court. In the courtroom. Were you in the courthouse? Yes, definitely. Okay. Terry, did you want to be here the last four days last week, inside the courtroom? I love spending time with my daughters and have them hear what they have to say, but. In this case, I didn't want to be here because I wanted them to speak totally freely and without the discomfort of being in my presence if they had something to say. Is that why you weren't here? Absolutely, yes. We're going to cut to the chase on a lot of things because I made counsel a promise that I would have you in less than an hour. Wow. And so we're, I'm going to be true to my word here. Um, it's 10 o'clock. I will have, we'll, we'll be done before 11. Okay. I want to talk about skiing. Tell the jury about your ski experience. What type of skier were you? At that time? Or do you want some background? I, we don't need a whole lot of background. Okay. Back in 2016, what type of skier were you? I was advanced and immediate. There was no places I would go except um, serious bumps. Um, narrow, narrow little gulches, and uh, uh, didn't do any, any big jumps. So uh, other than that, I would go just about anywhere. Okay. How often would you ski? Two to three times per week. Okay. For how many years? Well, I started 37 years ago. It was a winter sport for my family. We lived at high elevation. Okay. And in all of your years, other than the ski collision with Ms. Paltrow, have you ever been in another ski accident? Never. Never. Have you ever skied with the ski patrol? As a matter of fact, I had the good fortune. I learned to ski from a family that owned a ski resort. They were, they were relation. And they would come out to Snowbird and they were, I think, it was a whole family run operation with eight children and so they they were ski patrollers and they were instructors and I had the very best of company every winter for a week when the kids were out of school. And then I had the good fortune of having a Lions Club friend, Scott, who's still a dear friend, that lives up in Spokane and he was a ski patroller for Targi and he said, Terry, come up with me, you know, on this weekend. And, and I said, I'll slow you down. And he said, you know what, uh, just follow me and do what I do. And that's what I did. And I had the good fortune of spending a lot of time with Scott and seeing and observing what ski patrols do and how they calm people down and reassure them they're going to be okay. So I really appreciated that and okay. experience. So it sounds like you've skied at Snowbird, skied at Targi. Had you ever skied at Deer Valley on the day of the collision? No, no. That was your first time ever skiing it at Deer was, Valley? It was, it was. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about that day. A um, couple of preliminary things. I, I asked Miss Paltrow on Friday how tall she was. How tall are you? I think I'm now 5'5". Five, five. Okay. And Shoot. what was your weight at the time of the, the collision? Well. In the VA, you don't take anything off. You, whatever you walk in with, your coats, heavy coats in wintertime, boots, um, wallets. I give that excuse to when I <laughs> <laughs> What? How, so, how, how much did you weigh about? Fully dressed. I was or undressed, probably 63, 62 pounds. 163, 162. Okay. All right. So 
we've the, the jury's heard about meetup groups. What is a meetup group? A meetup group was just a lifesaver for me, being new to this area, um, hard to accumulate friends. And um, so when a fellow that I was on a hike with, a, a new fellow, said, have you heard of meetup? And I hadn't. So he says, look it up and sign up. And I did. And it was a wonderful organization of groups of people where you had a shared interest, uh, whether it was dancing or concerts or skiing. And so I signed up and joined some groups, and it was really a life changer. Okay. So my understanding is the day of this ski collision, you were with kind of a group of people in the meetup group. Is that fair? That's right. All right. Did the group have a plan? I mean, were you the organizer of that meetup group that day? No, I was not. I asked Kurt to take that over because I planned on being gone that day, and Kurt organized that. Okay. It sounds like, obviously, you weren't gone that day. You ended up being able to make it. I came back a little early from wherever I was and, and just said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go ski today. And um, I happened to see on the list that day also was a lady that I had met when I first moved here. And she happened to be a ski instructor at Canyons, and, but she had been at Deer Valley as well. And so I called and said, Debbie, I got, I'm going to go. I, I'll, I'll pick you up. So I picked her up at Kimball Junction on the way and went there with her and dropped her off the skis. And we met the group, and I asked her if it would be okay if she let our group out because she's very familiar with Deer Valley. And so um, she said yes and gave us the rules of the road. Would you like to hear that? So the meetup group, you guys kind of ski all together-ish? Well, and this ski meetup group is unusual. It's like herding cats. You've got those of just want to go and, and, and they kind of know who one another is and so they they go ahead and, and group up and, and sometimes I wind up skiing with the uh, beginners and getting them started and making them comfortable and uh, so they don't stay together well. We meet usually we'll say let's meet at Alps at 1.30 and so that's what we do. Okay so you mentioned we set forth the rules of the road for that day. What were the rules of the road that day? Well the only rules of the road we are pretty familiar with the rules of the road so we don't go over that at the time, but Debbie just said, we're going to start down, Ban down Bandana because that's how we'll get to the Blacks are really good skiing. So our group knew that's where we're headed. And she said, whatever you do on Bandana, do not go down the middle of the run. Why it's not? packed and crowded with people. She said, go down the edges. She said, it'll be clear. And so when I came over the edge of the hill, there were heads bobbing in the middle. It was just compacted with little heads and big tall heads and and I just diagonaled. I went straight over to the right edge of that run. And is that where you stayed uh, prior to the collision? I did. I stayed there the whole time because and it was wide open. So you were over to the right side to avoid the people. Did it have anything to do with your vision? There's been a lot of discussion about your, your right eye problem. Yes. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But skiing on the right side of the... The, uh, the run, did that have anything to do with your right eye? Yeah, maybe that's one of the things, yes. Okay. And we'll talk about your vision in just a couple minutes, but sure. I want to focus on the collision right now. Craig Ramon, he just testified. Oh, yes. You saw him. He, he also testified last week. How well did you know Craig at the time um, back Febu February 2016? Um, he was one of maybe an average of 15 people, 10 or 15 people that would come. So I shared his company uh, during those times. And um, I knew him only as being an amazing skier, strong, strong skier, and, and knew that. And I appreciated the fact he tended to like to follow the group and uh, be behind as the protector because he brought a lady that was a person I knew that was his neighbor. So he would bring her up and ski behind her as a protector. So good guy, good guy. Did you guys hang out a lot before this you know, collision? You um, know, of course at lunch we spent time together and there may be an, a couple of other occasions where we met with him, but usually there was somebody else there um, along with us. Okay. So not exclu I don't remember being exclusive with him. All right. So, Terry, take the jury through what happened in this ski collision. Take it from, say, getting off of the lift. 
Yes, happy to do that. Um, it was really a very nice day for skiing, and I was really looking forward to it. And of course, Kirelli has amazing groomed runs. Found that out right away. And um, so, um, I'm starting from the when I get off. When when you got off of the ski lift. Gotcha. So I was on a chair with um, probably four people. I think uh, Joanne, Debbie, um, Craig, and there could have been another person besides myself. And we had already met and discussed going down the right side of that run, or going down the sides. And so I came over the top of the hill and saw that and headed for the right side, and I'll pick it up there. And everyone just kind of dispersed, some more to the right and more to the left. And I remember looking and seeing no one. And they generally begin to run as people are f afraid of the off-piste, of the off-groomers. And so they stay away from that area where the pile of snow is piled up. And uh, off-piste can be a rough ride if you have to divert and run out in there. Some skiers can't make it through there easy. And it's a lot of bumps. So I, start, I went right down the run and started just making nice soft turns and um, staying within that boundary. It could have been as much as five yards wide, but it might have been more like five or six feet. I don't, can't, ima can't imagine, I can't remember. Lots of room. And so I'm just skiing easy and paying attention and um, all of a sudden in front of me is two big signs. I've never seen that big of slow down signs. It seemed like they were four by eight, like a four by eight sheet of plywood size high with great big letters, slow down. I went, whoa, and I'm looking around and the crowd's about the same as me and speed wise. And so did I just, you pay attention to the sign? I did, and I backed off of whatever I was doing. And then another big sign, like 10 feet away, the same eight by four by eight sheet up there, big letters. Well, they're serious, must be lots of merging trails down here. So um, I just backed off, and again, the skiers were on my left. We were all about the same speed. And um, um, I could see down where the edge of the run went. It curved around, a tree line came out a little bit, and it, the little run came, turned, curled around. And I could see about half of the, I don't know if it's a montage or the empire, could about half of that beautiful building. and. And um, I, it was wide open. There was nothing, nothing in front of me. And so um, I came around that corner and it was, it takes my breath away to think I, this is hard because I, I don't like going through this scene. I, I just remember everything was great and then I heard something I've never heard at a ski resort and that was a blood curdling scream. Just, I can't do it. It was, uh, and then, boom. And it was like somebody was out of control and gonna hit a tree and was gonna die. And that's what I had until I was hit. Th that's what was going on in your mind. Over overruled. That's what's going on in, in your mind when you hear that scream. That was instantaneous. Oh my gosh, somebody's out of control. And they're really seriously out of control. Not time for a hockey stop. I didn't go think about that, but most people could avoid that, I think. Good skiers. Okay. And I'll move on. Okay. So you keep. You... All right, I think he's overruled. He's overruled. Thank you. So you hear this scream. Yes. What happens next? You know, I got hit in my back so hard, and it, I, I'm right at my shoulder blades, and it felt like, and was perfectly centered, and the, the fists and the poles were right there at the bottom of my shoulder blades. Serious, serious smack. Never been hit that hard, and I'm flying. I'm absolutely flying. Now, you're not airborne. Well, it, all I saw was a whole lot of snow, and, I didn't see the sky, but I was flying in that sense. I had no control. And I remember 
that's thinking, okay, you really got to hang on. And then I thought about the crowd on the left, and I thought, I don't know who's wanted over there, and I do not want to get them mixed up in here. And I've heard, you know, um, that maybe that's not decided about how my ribs really got hurt. I absolutely lurched with what little I could off of my skis a little bit more to the right to keep, to make sure nobody over here got involved on my left side. And then it was like the ground's coming up, nobody in front of me, just me going to the ground, and you're falling far further than 90 degrees like you fall on a floor. You, you, you got that extra, and so it's quite a ways to hit the ground. And I just said, okay, you've got to protect your face, you know, and your head, and that's the last thing I remember. It didn't happen. I did glance over and saw, just, just out of the corner of my eye, I could see, not glance over, but I could see somebody going by, and I'm going, okay, they're, they're safe. Last thing I remember, everything's black. Did black. the person who struck you land on top of you? I wouldn't know that. I absolutely would not know that. I was just surprised. I had no upper body strength enough to be able to catch myself. I had no idea. And she, Do you remember hitting your head on the ground? No, that part, no, nope, that's all gone. I just remember it, my hand, arms collapsing and that's the last thing I remember. What's the next thing you remember? I'm getting an adrenaline rush here, I guess, living this again, just being here in present too. Uh, and let me just stop you really quick. You said you're getting an adrenaline rush. Is this something that you enjoy? Adrenaline rush? Not this no. kind. <laughs> Not now. Okay. okay. All right. So what's the first thing that you remember? Or the next thing that you remember after well, you're on yes. the ground? Um, the first thing I remember is everything is still black, like I'm unconscious. And, but it's like my subconscious is going into protection mode, like, you better pay attention here and listen to what's being said to you. And all I could recognize was that someone was really angry at me. And it was a man, and it didn't come out clear in the beginning. I couldn't really hear what he was saying, but I just knew he was mad, and he was right, right above me, right close to me. And I'm feeling a little afraid, and I tried to move, and I could not move a limb. I couldn't move my head. I couldn't move my body. Nothing was responding. Just this message I was getting. And the next thing, it became, became a little more clear, and I heard him say, do you realize, you realize that you were skiing under the rules. You hit somebody. You hurt somebody. And it just insistent that I was the bad guy. And that's why I said, this has got to be a husband or boyfriend. It's really mad at me. And I sound like did, a big... Did you know who he was? I had no idea. No idea. It was just a very angry person trying to um, bully me into believing something that I didn't think could happen was I heard a woman's voice, right? Again, couldn't move. And about the third time he went through that, and it's getting louder, and it's, I started to understand what he was saying, and he was really insistent that I was doing something wrong and hit somebody. And I remember in desperation, because I couldn't move anything, I tried to, I couldn't fight. I couldn't fly. Who's, who's going to try? And I tried moving something and I could move my skis a little bit. I could just feel just below my knee. I could just slide my skis a little bit. And, and, and that's an important point. My skis are still on. They're still on. And I'm, I'm thinking I got to placate this guy. He's really mad. If he decided he wanted to jump on me, Right now, I, he could finish me off. I was so, I remember, I remember saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, now you're, you're, Twice. Whisper, you're whispering I know that, I am, but because maybe. that's what I heard. Nothing was coming out. My lips were moving, my tongue was moving. There was nothing coming out of my mouth, and my heart rate went up again. Okay. 
Okay. It looked like what you were mouthing was, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. And, and I was just going, I can't believe it. I thought, try again. I'm sorry. Nothing was coming out. And to me, I heard nothing. When you kind of mumbled, whispered, whatever you want to call it, I'm sorry, was that you apologizing for causing the accident? No, absolutely not. I was trying to placate this man in the only defensive manner that I could. Okay. You've talked about the man who was who was yelling at you. Miss Paltrow last week talked about and admitted that she was kind of cussing you out as well. Do you remember any conversation that you had or anything that she said to you? Absolutely not. There was one voice that my brain was focused on. Thank God, I guess, uh, and and that was self-protection, I guess. I only heard a male voice, a mad, angry male voice. I heard nothing. Maybe that happened before I came to that point in consciousness. Were you still on the ground at this time? Still on the ground, absolutely, face down okay. how, did, how did you end up getting up? Well, that's a story too, but um, basically um, I heard Craig saying, Terry, are you okay? Now this is Craig Ramone. Well, at that point, I didn't identify his voice. I, you know, I just things were a little strange yet, and and I heard Terry, are you okay? And um, and about the third time it hit me, somebody wants to is here to help me. I didn't at that point, except an angry man was there, and I I said, oh my gosh, and I went through. And I, I looked up and I could see Craig standing there above me, eight or ten feet. And on his immediate left, my right, was a man in an all green outfit and with a helmet on and ski goggles and, you know, looked good. And, um, and I thought, oh, he's here to help me, right? He looks like he's from Deer Valley. And so um, I, I was going through the things answering his question about that was my thoughts now back to my what my injuries I'm Craig is saying are you okay and I said oh my my ribs are so sore there's just this really deep throbbing purple pain here and and then I said um, my vision is swimming with sparks and they were unusual sparks I'm going is that my retina is that my eyes and it wasn't a really attachment a retinal hole or anything and I'm going, that's my brain. I'm thinking, those sparks are my brain. And all this time you're still on the ground? I'm still, I'm actually, yeah, the next point is that after I tell me about my ears going, I'm going, my ears are buzzing. Oh, and my said my brain is like it's on Novocaine. And, and then I realized, oh, I'm not seeing, oh, I, you know what, I missed a spot. And that's where I looked up and couldn't see them and got frightened about that. And I realized, going, oh my, what's going on? And then I went like this and go, oh, happy, I could see. So I missed that part. That happened before I started telling what all is wrong with me, answering his question. And then Craig said to me, as I remember, of course, I'm, my brains are a little bit stretched out of place. And, and uh, I, I, re I remember um, him saying, do you know who you are? And what I thought I said was, oh my gosh, I can feel this pathway in my brain. It's going around and trying to figure out who I am. And yes, I know I'm Terry. And then he said, um, do you know where you are? And I said, I know I'm skiing, but I don't know where I am. And that's when the man in green took off. He was, I was kind of noticing that he really wasn't interested in what I had to say. He wasn't asking questions. He was standing there rather stoically, head not moving, goggles on, just resting on his poles and his skis and was sort of disinterested. But when he skied off, my heart sank because I really thought he was the one person that was there to help me. And, and I, I, I'm laying on the ground with my head downhill and I couldn't see where he went so I was really Terry how did you get up the question is how I got up and that might have been the question in the beginning but That's right how did you get up 
you know, I realized that I was getting cold and uh, snow was packed in around me. I was starting to get a little shivery, uh, uh, maybe from a little shockish maybe. And, and I started, I got to go. I got to get my skis downhill. And I started sliding my skis around and my legs around. I think Craig must have been shell-shocked by this guy leaving too. I don't know but what he thought. But I remember getting my skis around, and it's so painful every time you have to contract your... Terry. Thank you. How did you get up? Thank you. That is one of my habits. I just focus. After I got halfway around, a man showed up in front of me, and I thought he came from the right. And I don't remember if he said one word to me. He just reached down and grabbed me and jerked me up on my feet, which I was not ready to be up on my feet. My head's swimming. I'm in pain. I'm worried about falling down again and breaking a rib, puncturing a lung. He gets me up, and I'm on the edge of the run, so it's bumpy. It's hard to get my skis under me, and I'm stomping down the snow and trying to get him in the spot. Got my, got my poles wedged in, and I think I've got it in stability, and he's gone. And this time, I could see him. I could watch him go all the way down the hill. And I'm up. I'm standing up. Am I feeling safe? No. People are going by, shh, 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 you know. And I'm thinking, Man, I do not want to get hit again. My understanding is that you and Craig tried to ski down a little ways, but then didn't quite make it too far. Is that accurate? Yeah. He said, you think you can ski? And I'm thinking, if I, the option is getting left up here, I will try anything. I got to get off of here. So yes, uh, he said, follow me. And I did. And I don't know how I was skiing. I don't think I was edging. I think I was probably snow plowing. And he finally turned around and said, Terry, Terry, stop. You've forgotten how to ski. He, and of course, it was just, we were trapped. And he said, I got to find help. Your Honor, there are some hearsay here. Hearsay. Eventually, Craig got help, yes? Yeah, he said, I got to find help. And so he disappeared, and I just put, put my head down and prayed that I wouldn't get smacked into it again. I felt pretty vulnerable. And he disappeared. What happened when help arrived? You know, um, Whitney um, showed up, and I was so grateful to see someone. And now, is that I, Whitney Smith? Yes, I, that's her name. Mm -hmm. And the jury has seen pictures, and we're going to put another picture up in just a couple minutes. Is she the one in a, in a red jacket that there's a picture of in this case? Do you know? Yes, as a matter of Yes, that's her. Mm -hmm. All right. So did she take you down on the, the toboggan, or how did you get down? She did. Um, uh, she said, um, are, you, are you okay kind of thing? And I don't know. Not so good. I don't remember the conversation. It was a little easy stuff. And so... Um, got in and I remember Whitney saying to me now you got to remember these things because I'm going to ask again later and she told me that she was from Michigan moved five years before uh, and it started on the ski patrol here five years before she loved her job her name was Whitney and that she had a horse named Titan that she wore in the years off so she told me to remember those things I'm going this is a brain test She's wanting to check if my brain's okay. And from that point on, I quit worrying about myself. I quit worrying about my injuries. It was just like, I'm going to remember this. I do not want to have any brain injuries. And I locked onto that and, and nothing else. And later on, she did ask me, and I could repeat it back to her exactly as she told me. And, um, oh, as she won the women's downhill in the Ski Patrol of Women's Competition, Sounds like you still remember some of these I, it details. Just, I was so determined to hang on to that fact, those facts, yes. Okay. All right. Once you got down, what type of medical attention did you receive? Still at the ski resort. Yeah. Well, Whitney is not a paramedic. She's not an EMT. Um, I, I didn't really expect her to have advanced knowledge about neurological testing and pupil testing and cranial nerve testing. She did 
she did a great job of doing exactly what she's supposed to do just to be at that triage level to decide what kind of care I needed. Okay, so what type of care did you get? What type of medical treatment did you get oh, no when you got down to the bottom? No medical treatment. Okay. Am I missing something? Did, did you get checked out at the Instacare or anybody? Oh, after, after yes. we left there. Yes, um, I asked Debbie, I said, where can I go and get checked and see what they say? And she said, well, let's stop at the Instacare. I know it's on the way. So I'd never been there before, but that's where we stopped and went in there. Okay. All right. So you got checked out. When did you learn that it was Gwyneth Paltrow that you were in the collision with? It was, it was brought up, I think, that the... the the people that came in uh, to the room to check on me that were part of my group would they check in and check out once and and um, which is what I tell them go ski and go enjoy yourself and um, and so um, it, it came up and it probably was Craig who said I heard him say it was going to Paljo and to me it's like I'm not into celebrity worship so um, I didn't care at that point. Did you think it was cool to collide with a celebrity? Absolutely not. That is not who I am, no. Did you ever write that? Ever tell anybody that? I don't think it came out in those words, but I, I don't remember that. But I, I think I was trying to communicate to my kids. And the reason was because I got calls from friends that knew my kids that heard I got crushed on, at the ski resort. And so I... I, I thought I gotta, I gotta let my kids know I'm okay. That was my main point. I don't want them to worry about me. I'm okay, and so I just, I started it out, and May said, I'm famous or something. Okay, and we're gonna pull that out. Could you pull up? Thank you. Exhibit 111, please. Yes, Defense Exhibit 111. We're gonna call it the I'm famous email. <laughs> Sometimes old technology like the Elmo works better than the new technology, doesn't it? All right. And Terry, you could come down if you need to. Or Does it show on your screen there? Um, yeah, but I'm not the B&I doctor. I'm not wearing fashion because I broke the pair of glasses I bought and couldn't find the old pair, so now I'm... Okay. All right, so I want to go through this. Um, Defense Exhibit 111. Do you see, first of all, there are two posts. The first looks like... On the bottom is the first at uh, 8 o'clock p.m., yeah. and then the, the response was at 9.32 p.m. Do you see that? I do. All right. The message reads, and I'm just, just tell me if I read it right, from you to Jenny, Polly, and Shay. Those are your three daughters? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Okay. And the subject said, I'm famous. Do you see that? I do. Why did you write, I'm famous? You know, again, my head was scrambled. All I was trying to do is desperately communicate with my kids before they heard from somebody else I got crushed. So um, I didn't pick my words well. 
um, not at all how I felt, and I really was trying to add a little levity to a serious situation, and it, it backfired. Little did I know that this is where to be. Um, so you write, I'm famous, and then here's what happened from my friend and eyewitness, and then there's the link. The link. The link. We now know what the link shows. Okay. Sorry, I thought you were going to the GoPro. I'll withdraw my comment. I'm just talking about the link. Yes. Okay. So, we now know what the link is. Yes. Correct? The link is... It's a really bad picture. You'll get a clear picture. It's the picture of Whitney Smith. Oh, it's right there. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. It's that. And then that leads to later comments back and forth between you and Craig. Yes. In that, under that picture, can you read what it says? Um, yes. Um, Whitney kept me entertained while probing you me. You want to speak in the mic? Oh, yes. Um, Whitney kept me entertained while probing me with questions to evaluate my senses. A dedicated outdoor person and horse lover from Michigan. She also took me down in the toboggan by herself and won the DV Women's Downhill Race Contest. A sweetheart. I was grateful for her. Are those the thing? First of all, did you write that under her picture? You know, I don't know what time it was added. Carlene was hurrying back from St. George and depending, I don't know, um, she helped me a lot um, verbalize things because things weren't making sense at all in all right. communication and she may have helped and participated in that. I don't know. Those details, are those the details that Whitney wanted you to memorize as you were taking down the toboggan? Yep. All right, can you go back up to the emails? All right, so you send that out to your three daughters. I yes? did, yes. Okay. And Shay, who testified last week, she responded to you with the top post, correct? Yes. All right. Can you read what it says? I can. Actually, let's put the subject, read what the subject says. It says, I'm famous at what cost, question mark. Do you know why Shay wrote <laughs> that? Well, that it, do, I, do you I, know? I think she may have called me, did she, um, right after this, and um, and so speculation, right? Sustained. Do you remember? Um, I'm pretty certain that she checked in on me and made a phone call, and um, um, what what did do you remember what you told her during the phone call? Yeah, I had a chance to talk about my symptoms exactly, I think. And and that I I said I said, you know, as many people that were on that slope that day, maybe a couple hundred within that vicinity, there has to be a, a GoPro um, picture or video. If it's a helmet mount, they're gonna look over just like Craig did, right? And they're gonna go catch it. They hear a holler. They're going to catch it. I'm going, I just know there's one out there. We've got to find that. That is the evidence we need. And um, so Terry, she misinterpreted. Did you have a GoPro? Absolutely. I do have one, yes, but I did not have it on that day. Do you know of anybody in your ski group that had a GoPro? No. Have you ever seen a GoPro video of this accident? Absolutely not. No, I would have loved to have it. It was what we needed. All right. Okay. We can take that off. Thank you. Let's talk about your injuries. What injuries, to your understanding, did you sustain in this collision? At this point? Right now. What, right now. What, your understanding as to what, what happened, happened to Terry in this collision? 
At this point, I know that I had at least at least four broken ribs. Um, I su sustained a concussion, um, and um, that's the two main factors, I think. And then later on, I had some right leg and still do right leg and anomalies movement. It just has its own idea and thinking where it needs to be, opposed to what I'm thinking. Okay. Let's talk about how your ribs, how your brain injury, how that has affected you. Okay. Have things in your life changed? I'm like living another life now. And let's focus on, we'll kind of go step by step, different, different things, physical-wise. How, how have you changed physically since the accident? Well, I can't ski anymore. I was told that if I did and had another crash, that I could wind up full-time, full-time in a nursing home. The odds of that's very high. So and, no more skiing. Well, and I... I tried, I tried not to go back, and, and I did ski a few more times by myself just to see if I still could. I had this ungodly looking fluorescent red outfit I bought, a MIPS helmet to protect my brain better, and I thought I can do this. I really, this is my love and joy. I meet friends, I make friends, I stay with them the whole year. They're, it's a year-round activity, and it's a life, lifelong activity. And so I, I tried, and I felt like I was skiing through landmines, just ridiculous. Looked ridiculous, all bright fluorescent red, wasn't thinking very well. And then, and then I'd, I'd have to stop every 30 yards and look back behind me to make sure no one was right behind me. Saw a reaction. And um, um, gradually gave it up just three four times, and I think I was done. Okay. And before we go into more activities, what about physically? Do you have pains, aches, pains, problems? Your physical being, how are you? Um, I'm, I'm a much more careful person. Um, I don't take any risks and more brain damage. And I'm not sure I understand your sure. question exactly. Have you had any kinds of balance issues or headaches? Um, of course, initially. That was just, I, I, my life was living in an orange chair, sitting there initially, and sleep for 12 hours and then sit for half an hour and tell Carlene, I gotta, I gotta go back to bed. But to be fair, it's not like that anymore. No, it's not, no. I, I had, no, anymore, no, it's not. Let's talk about mentally. How, how have, you seen yourself change mentally what are some things that you've noticed or difficulties that you've had mentally many things i don't have the words nor the intelligence or training to explain you have lots of words i do <laughs> i admit it's just this has been a bizarre part of this process is that i never feel like i've explained enough there's i it's like big gaps. I go, i got to start from the beginning, and everyone may recognize that by going through and building a case, and they don't know what I'm talking about until I get to the subject. So it's, everything is backwards. I'm building from the little things and, and then saying, oh, I'm talking about apples. They're going, I had no idea. Upside down and backwards. Communication just feels like I, I can't connect. And, um, and so I keep trying, desperately trying. And, and um, yeah, personality changes is not something I I just know it's different. Things are weird. You ever get lost? Oh my gosh, that was among the first signs when I tried to get out and work on the green team. And um, the, I, wait, whoa, whoa, what's the green team? What, the, what well, are you talking I, about? I volunteer for lots of groups, um, probably a couple hundred years, hours a year at least, I would think. And green team is one of those, a significant, a large group of heavy, heavy lifters who pick up. Um, plastic and aluminum recycle after concerts and USANA was the main one even though we've done Liberty Park and it's a group of maybe 15 people and we stay up until 1 o'clock in the morning picking that up up there 
and recycled the last year I worked 2015, 23 tons. And it's not just walking, 16,000 steps on what I saw. And it's bending and stooping and lifting and picking up and dragging a bag. And it's hard work, but really, really bonding with a lot of people and doing that. So that's what that is. So I tried going up there. And, I, and usually I carpool. And that day I didn't. I'm usually the driver. And so I parked and went and did our thing. And it's maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock and went back to the car and headed home. I'm going the wrong direction. I'm going, what's going on? I've done this dozens of times. I was lost. Now just to clarify, this is since the, the ski crash, right? Oh, yes. Okay. And my instincts for always knowing where north is, and it's really been good having grown up in the mountains. It just was instinctual. At night, I had no instincts anymore, anyway. And so I headed just instinctually where I thought I was supposed to be and wound up north or south or somewhere else, and that happened a second time. Had and that ever happened to you before this ski collision? I've never been so reliable, relying, needing uh, maps. And so um, I, I'm pretty sure I've lost visual memory because it doesn't, knowing those turns and the houses where you turn, the streets you turn at, that feels like, and I know a little bit about that, that feels like a deficit I have, that, that doesn't, I don't retain that anymore. I can be there a dozen times and I still have to use maps to make sure I get there. Really odd. What about emotional, Terry? How are your relationships with your family and friends since the ski accident? You know, um, my interaction with my family has been more difficult. And um, I, I think I, of course, I'm desperately to be close to my family and my girls. But something's wrong in my essence and what I, what I bring to the table with them. And communication is not as smooth, and and um, um, it's it's been more difficult, no question. And they've they've told me they've noticed some changes. Yeah. Now I didn't know you before. Jerry didn't know you before. What kind of relationships did you have with your girls before this crash? <laughs> My goals are always angels. I'm their protector. <laughs> Some things happened to them while testifying that I heard about it. It hurts to see them in that place as their protector. I rode home with them and started sobbing, so I get caught up in that. Do you love your girls? Oh my gosh. There's been some discussion about um, your relationship with Jenny and that it's not always optimal. From your perspective, what is your relationship like with Jenny? And how has it been even before this accident? Yeah, Jenny, Jenny and I probably don't communicate as well as I do with my other two daughters. Not probably, definitely we don't. We just have a hard time um, in that process. And, I will not give up. I try to push to keep that those lines open, but there's been times when there's been long breaches in our conversation. And um, yeah, I I feel like her protector more than anybody does. So it's hard, been harder for me to transition from being a parent to being an adult, an equal adult. I just feel like I need to intervene more on her behalf and help her. It's been hard. Let's talk about Carlene. We heard her testify last week. Um, she's a catch. Why'd you let her go? In my choice, I wouldn't have. But I had it after eight months. I had to tell her to leave. I said, "I'm not asking. Her. I'm telling you, you got to leave." And I. Why'd you tell her to leave? I knew she didn't buy into this. She didn't buy in to me not being the same person and coming coming into a relationship. And and I said, I'm not sure I'm going to get to back to normal again. And 
I don't want you to feel like you're that I'm a crippled vet and you're going to stick it out with me because I know you would half a brain or whatever I know you would but don't do it you need your life you run right now and it was a sad time for both of us I know and she's in a great relationship with Bill now and that was the purpose and I think better than what I would have brought honestly it's hard to admit that but it's true Sure. Okay, we'll take a short recess. Why don't you stand now and then you're welcome to step down during the break. <laughs> Council, would you approach the bench, please? Ms. Van Orman? Yes, thank you. We've had trouble with that chair. Oh. It wasn't you who broke it. I've got, I've got one side higher than the other, but that's what it does. I don't oh. think. Yeah. That's the lean side. But everything else functions well on it. Tell you what, just leave it. We'll we'll, we'll work Move around on. it. Move on, yes. Okay. All right. So let's get back to some of the things that you've noticed. Um, we've heard from others, but I want to hear from you. Yes. Um, have you had any type of anger issues since the collision that that you've noticed? There's no question. I have a much wider range of yeah temperament than I had before. Much wider. What about your social life? Do you, before before the ski accident, what kind of things did you do? You know, I, I look back in the last couple of years, in fact, I did that, and I just realized I was in the groove of my life at that stage. I had a lady in my life that I dearly loved, and um, we just did everything together and spent I believe it was two years together and had cleaned up our lives and physically great shape. Both of us like to hike and walk and travel and really we're enjoying our lives. And we spent some time in St. George where she's located and I spent some time here. It was wonderful. We cleaned up the businesses of homes and combining homes and parents' homes and and we had, she, as I hope everybody noticed, she is an amazing woman. and so. A great deal of connection with her and, and so group. since the car or the car excuse me uh, the ski accident yes. do you still go and do fun things and have that zest for life I've been self-imposed 90% staying in the house a recluse self-imposed recluse just not feeling as fun, not feeling as engaged in other things, not just don't have that same spark I had, and don't feel the same about when I go to places. Um, you still travel, though. You know, I have traveled because... What? Let's, put it, let, let's talk about travel for a minute. Yes. Be before the ski collision, did you do a lot of travel? A lot of travel. It happened to be something that Carlene liked to do, and so we, we traveled a lot. Went on the only cruise that I was ever on um, before the crash, and yes, we had, and we had more plans. Did you ever travel alone before the ski? I did. I did travel alone in a few places. Yes. Okay. What about since the ski collision? Have you still traveled? I have traveled, and as part of the problem, I'm just easily confused about things. Um, so I usually request having somebody else along, also because of this funny aberrant foot thing, wanting to go its own way. I don't feel as safe. And then also, um, yeah, things would happen, like 
I put the wrong name, I get their name spelled wrong, and important flight tickets and and the birth date, which I should know. So it was it was difficult, and I really wanted someone to go with me. I didn't feel as secure in traveling alone. Have you traveled alone since the ski accident? I have not. I had one time when um, a, f a friend, one friend, there's actually two, but I had one friend when we had planned a trip to Europe, a physician's assistant and um, a, a, my yoga instructor. And she decided right before the trip, um, Terry, I don't like you anymore. I don't know what's different. You're a different person. I don't like you anymore. And how, canceled her. How'd that make you feel? It's like, oh my gosh, I've known her as long, and one other one as well, as long as I've lived here, almost five years, I'm guessing, at that time. And it's like personality, like that's something that develops from the time you're a child. How, what do you do about a personality issue? Something's changed. I'm, I don't know, more aggressive. And you know what? That lady will not answer her phone or texts. And I have. Well, we're not going to say her name on on. This no, we are broadcast. not. So we are not. Gonna, we're not going to. She's a lovely lady. Yes, she is. Have Have your other friendships been affected as well? Yes, um, another lady that I knew for quite some time, a sweetheart, also of a woman. Um, we just got off kilter a little bit. Well, after Carlene, after I told Carlene she had to run, um, it was a few weeks later. I couldn't realize how lonely I was. Yes, I should have taken more time to absorb that, but I was so lonely because we were together all the time. So I reached out to her, and we spent a couple of things, to, activities together, and I couldn't believe the words that came out of her mouth. She said, Terry? This is hearsay. It, it is. It is hearsay, so we can't, you can't testify as to what she said. But how did it make you feel? Well, it made me feel like, what's wrong with me, and how do I fix my personality? How do I fix it? I'm a different person. It's a pretty complex issue, and I lose self-confidence. The person I am, I'm going, what happened? Terry, are you trying to improve yourself? I've been in denial. I've been in denial about my issue. I refuse to believe I have brain issues. I've just done everything I can. I knew I had a critical window to restore stuff and I did everything I was told and everything I could find out about trying to get those neurons reconfigured in a good way and I haven't found this helped so I'm still in denial. I keep thinking there's got to be something. Are you trying to improve yourself? Yes, I don't want to have I'm trying to prove I don't have it. Everything I do, I'm trying to prove I don't have that wrong with me. There's been a lot of discussions about how Terry was before this ski collision. Um, and could you put up Defense Exhibit 23, please? And I'm actually going to move for the admission of the entire Defense Exhibit 23. I'm assuming there's no objection. Does any of this need to be redacted? So, uh, let me just state that my understanding was that Ms. Van Orman was going to be done at 11. I almost changed. changed. Right now she's moving for uh, Defense Exhibit 23. Any objection? No. Okay, so it's received. As to the redaction concern, I, I do believe at least some parts of this may be, need that, but it looks like we're not showing those. Are you showing? <laughs> Address, for instance. Um, but, well, at the bottom of that, do you have that exhibit in front of you? I think I do, yes. I, yes, I think I do. All right. Do you see where it says chief complaint down at the bottom? 
Yes, I do. Yes. It says regular visit. Yes. Was this a regular visit that you were attending with, um, with, with your provider? Um, it, it could be. I, I, I don't know. I usually saw her once a year or once every six months. So if that's what it says, I believe that's. Okay. And just for reference, Terry, I know you weren't here, but this is the I'm getting old exhibit. That I'm getting old visit. Could you go to the next page, please? Oh, that's true. Is this Defense 23? Or? Defense, Defense 23. All, all of Defense 23. I have nothing in front of me now. It, it's coming. Don't worry. Oh. All right, so this is the second page of that exhibit talks about 69 year old male with HTN, HLD. We're not going to go through all of those <laughs> yeah. things. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just got over a, a URI. Do you know what a URI is? I do. What yeah. is it? Upper respiratory infection. Okay. So you just got over that yesterday, you think, at least according to this record. No cough, just runny nose um, and upper respiratory symptoms. This is going to be his test for the cough, had not had a persistent cough, etc. Weight gain, thinks eating out too much. Were you eating out too much? <laughs> yes. Um, Carlene and I chose to eat out instead of cook. Okay. And not getting enough exercise. Yes. Think you're, thinks you've gotten old all of a sudden. Terry, what does that mean? Did you tell your doctor that? You know, um, I relate it to the URI. If someone who's just gotten over a viral or bacterial infection, either one, over two weeks with a cough and just feeling worn out, I wouldn't doubt I wouldn't say something like that. Most and in fact, would. it says, does not think depressed, mood is good, just not doing the things you used to, but also thinks you're going to start skiing again and re reinstate your gym membership. Did you have a plan? Yes, I absolutely did have a plan. All right. And that, that's all I need for that. Um, talk about planning, and I, and I meant to ask you about this before we, we move on. Um, do you have? Do you know what executive functioning means? Yes, I'm well, familiar with that term actually from what, before. What's your understanding of what it means? It's ability to coordinate your actions through your life, to be able to put things together, make decisions about them, get things done and be efficient and effective and be able to multitask and um, um, be effective, be and efficient and effective. Sure. Trying to move along. So Terry, you were talking about executive functioning. You kind of gave a, a, what that means to you. It looked like to me from exhibit 23, you were able to make a plan in your life and kind of follow through with that. Have you been able to do that since the ski accident? The examples of not being able to do that are one of my collections I keep track of, of all the things I want to do and can't do, and there's thousands. There's at least 12, I guess I should say 1,200 or 1,500 items on my to-do list. When I had, I look back to 2016, it repeats every day, whatever changes I make. I look back to 2016 and there were half a dozen, dozen back there, which is Stephen Covey's rule, right? That's what you get done. You mark them as priorities and get them done. It's just now continuous stuff I don't get done. And I can't tackle because I can't figure it out. It's just goofy. I, the things that I could do, I was really handy. My dad was a handyman. And I learned and I have the tools. I have an example. You know what? I would love to hear the example, but I have made a promise. Go for so it. I want to shift gears. Let's do it. At some point um, after the ski accident, some time passed, and there was a press conference that was held. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. I wasn't involved in that. I wasn't even your lawyer at the time. Was the press conference your idea? Absolutely not. Do you know why the press conference was held? Your Honor, that's... Is he waiving his attorney-client privilege? Because if he is, I'm going to drive a bus through that. What's the, what's the objection, counsel? He just violated his own attorney-client privilege. 
whose idea it was. I Objections overruled as to relevance. What is your understanding as to why a press conference was held? We understood and we agreed how important it would be. And I hold on. I don't want you okay, to discuss talk about anything that you you talked about with your counsel. Thank you. Okay. Did you have an understanding why a press conference was held? Yes. I knew that it was very important to have a video of that particular activity. It would just be convincing and would settle this beyond all doubt. Like a GoPro. Exactly, like a GoPro. But all the other cameras up there, there had to be somebody. And that's what I knew. In fact, I even looked recently and put up a notice at Deer Valley if anybody had a copy. After that press conference, did any GoPro videos surface? No, none. Has, have, have they ever? No, never. Terry, did you cause the ski collision with Miss Paltrow? Absolutely not. I swear to my God and my family and my other father in heaven, it's like, no, no, I did not. Why did you bring this lawsuit? Your Honor, I'd like to strike like religious oaths here. S sustained. And Why did you bring this? The jury this should disregard the last part of the last response. Why did you bring this lawsuit? You know, I, I realized after a period of time that no one believed how serious my injuries were. Just because I did, wasn't out and interacting continuously didn't mean there was something any wrong with me. I really, really wanted an opportunity. I knew there was damages. And then there was lots of insults added to that singular incident. Lots of insults along the way, doesn't, of other times where everything went contrary to my value system. And I just went, you know what? My daddy would say, if you got the truth, you bring the truth, don't let anybody back you down. And that's what I felt I needed to do. And I'm here to prove that truth, only the, with facts. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Ms. <coughs> Van Orman. Mr. Owens. So I'm kind of keeping my distance from people. Let's see, where's that little microphone that moves? Just on the table. Right. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to be wiping my nose a little. With this climate and dry air, I might have a bloody nose. Mm. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's talk about a few things. We're not going to get done with you today because uh, we have witnesses this afternoon, but I think we can go till noon. Is that all right with you? Yes, sure. Whatever you like. <coughs> Did you ever say to me, I wrote, I'm famous because it's cool that I had a collision with a celebrity. Was that your thinking at the time? And you said yes. Do you deny it? I, not if you have it on record, no. I don't deny it. I don't remember it. But well, let's go it. to page 15. Can you bring that up? Move to publish the deposition. Which your I, Honor, he said he doesn't deny it, so why are we publishing? Because he earlier denied it. I'll overrule the, obje or the objection and permit that portion of the deposition to be published. May I ask when this happened? Sure. Like one hour ago, two hours ago, you told this jury, I've never thought it was cool 
that I had a collision with a celebrity. Do you recall that? Yeah, I, yes, I guess I did say that, absolutely. And but that's not a true statement, is it? You have, you have said this in your deposition, true? Honestly, I don't ever remember saying it. Bring it up but, whenever you but can. I hey. don't, just, I don't doubt you. I misspeak a lot. Okay, this is page 15, line five through eight. So the words, I'm famous, this is my question, seem to say, I think it's cool that I had a collision with a celebrity. Was that your thinking at the time? And your answer was yes, I guess, yes. Now let's go to your weight. You testified today that you were 163 and 5'5", five five. true? Yes, I did. And uh, do you agree that at your deposition, you told me you were 175 to 180 and 5'8"? Yes or no? Um, yes or no? Qualified, a qualified yes. No, I don't want to qualify. I can't Did you tell me that? I like I mind. said, how much do you weigh? And you said 175, 80. How much did you weigh? And then you said 5'8". How high are you? How tall are you? Three inches different. Right? I just found that out. I didn't realize. I've had Sir, people telling me that. Honestly. You told this jury that at the time of the accident you were 163 <clears> and 5'5". <throat> five five. Did you not, like two hours ago? I did, yes. Yes. But you told me in your deposition years ago that you were 170 to 180 and 5'8". True? How many years ago did we do this? Three I've years lost, ago. I've lost a lot of weight. I'm down to my yes. usual weight. You know we're interested not now in your weight today. We're interested in your weight on the day. Thank you. I knew where that was going. Do you going. agree you were 5'8"? Yes. Have you shrunk three uh, inches? I couldn't believe it either. I, I wanted to argue because I think I'm 5'8 yet. You, have, you do have degenerative back disease I and those, those discs are I've just getting been, squeezed. Is that why? I have to say yes. I've always been... Five, eight and a half, and I knew I shrunk a half an inch, but three, wow. Mr. Sanderson, we're trying in council, let's not speak on top of one another Thank so you. that we have a clear, clean record. You're right. Yes, Your Honor. When uh, we talked about you being unconscious, and do you agree that someone who's unconscious doesn't have a stopwatch to figure out how long they were actually unconscious? I agree. That's true. Everything you've learned was from Craig after after the collision. No. Yeah, that's over vague, and uh, that's, uh, I'll withdraw it, because I, I agree that's not everything. Work. It's not everything. Sorry. Right, right. As far as level of, uh, length of unconsciousness, do you agree that uh, you you weren't stop watching yourself? I have no idea. Yeah. And yet, you, you did tell people, it varied over time, first a few seconds, then five minutes, then ten minutes. You did that, right? I, do you disagree? Y yes, it did vary. Do, and why did you do that? Why would you say, I don't know, then it's a few seconds, then it's five minutes, and then you told your psychiatrist at the VA it was up to ten minutes long. Why did you change? I had no idea, and I was searching. I, I really had no idea, and I was trying to answer. I sometimes make that mistake of guessing, but I really didn't know. And it was to try to get the attention of the doctor. Do you remember telling me that? I don't. I, I, don't, I don't know how to. Let's put. find it. What's the date? Let's go to page 95. <clears throat> Which deposition, one, two, or three? One. They're, they're all cumulative, so the page will tell you that. Page 95, starting at uh, line 7. When you first tell your health care providers a few seconds, and then later it turned into five minutes, and then later it turned into ten minutes, do you know that you gave varying answers to people? And then whenever you can pull it up, page page 95 yes the witness says and then can we go to the middle paragraph 
Yes, I do. And that was referencing the fact I personally did not know. I was a witness to ha I was not a witness to how long I was unconscious. And so somebody told me it was two seconds, and somebody said it was ten seconds, ten minutes. And so I was, I didn't know. It was hard for me to say. And then, next paragraph, it depends on my visit. If I want to make a deal out of it, and that was the reason for my visit, then I might say for ten minutes. I might pick the worst. That's kind of how we are. We go to the doctor's attention. We, excuse me, we go to get the doctor's attention about a specific thing. And it wasn't at that point how long I was unconscious was not a point of relevance for me. That's your testimony, correct? I'm even confused by those statements, so. I'm yes or no? Uh, yes, it is. By the way, when we took your deposition, <clears throat> there's there's a lot of formality to it, too. You're placed under oath just like the one you were put on today. Yeah. And uh, your counsel's present, and you've been able to, you were able to talk to them before. Yes? And I think I had, what, yes. 11 hours or so of deposition? I can't really hear you, sir, but uh, my, my question is, you had your advice of your counsel there. Yes. And uh, I asked at the beginning of the deposition, is there any reason why you can't give me your best testimony today? And you said yes. no, correct? Yes. And correct. Uh, I even told you, I think, that if you testify differently at your deposition, then uh, you'd, you would in front of this jury, I would call it to their attention. Do you recall this? Yes. And you took an oath, and you you then had the opportunity to make any changes to your deposition transcript. Is that true? Um, yes. And did you? No, I don't remember making any changes. I think I made two with you. Um, I said two corrections, and and that I remembered. Okay. You and, didn't. And you, you didn't make them. some, and uh, counsel told you let's let's not submit those. I haven't looked at these depositions at all. Not at all. Do you dispute that, uh, well, I heard you call Eric Christensen, a Deer Valley instructor for 40 years, a bully. Did you say that? I did say that, yes. And that he was yelling at your face. Yes. I figured out. I we'll, didn't actually know that until. And we'll meet, that at, we'll meet him at 1 o'clock. Uh, Deer Valley's known, or at least puts itself out there, doesn't it, as like the most customer friendly they could possibly be. Do you agree? I agree. Were your skis on or off at the end of the collision, do you know? Absolutely, they were on. Okay, Absolutely. so you do remember some things after. Yes. Okay. And uh, Craig, you. By the way, you said you weren't here for your daughters, but you haven't been here for several de several statements, right? Several. Yes. It was more than just like I don't want to make my daughters uncomfortable. You haven't been here for many. I didn't. Yeah. And uh, Sam Goldstein said part of the reason is you don't take criticism well. Do you agree with that statement? I always. I always want to be a better person, and I thought I, I thought I, I even tell my kids if I'm doing something wrong, tell me. I want to be better. All right. So, do you agree or disagree with this statement? Uh, Mr. Sanderson does not take criticism well. Hard for me to measure that. I've not been around other humans as much as I have been in the past, so it's hard for me to measure that. Honestly, I don't. Do you agree that when Whitney? Uh, came with the toboggan. Mm -hmm. She asked you what happened, and you said, "I don't know." Do you agree with that statement? Um, I, if if that's on the record, I don't disagree with it. I don't remember that particular part of our interaction. I just remember she said something to me, and it's the first question, right? Ski patroller comes up. By the way, you've hurt, hurt yourself before skiing. True. 
Never but, needing, never needing help, right? Get before this up. incident, though, you injured your knee. I had when I first learned to ski that first year. All right, Beaver. Mm -hmm. So you don't dispute that the first thing Whitney asked you is like, "How are you?" And what happened? Do you agree? Those are like the first two questions. I have no recollection of those questions. I don't. I would think she would reach out to me, but. I don't. Did you ever complain to Deer Valley about Eric Christensen, like I was treated like a bully? I had a lot of time to think about it. Yes or no? I don't know if I did. I wasn't, I think when I contacted Deer Valley, I I was just yeah. after I wanted to find out who hit me and I wanted to copy the records and I didn't make, bring it up. Yeah, you never once wrote to Deer Valley like, hey, your, your, uh, ski instructor is a total SOB to me. He treated me poorly. That's correct. I didn't bring it up because I did not want to cause some anger from him. I wanted to copy and find out who hit me. But seven years later, you're here saying he was terrible to me. Just terrible. Uh, Ramon, Craig Ramon said words to the effect that um, Christensen said to Ramon, your buddy took out Gwyneth Paltrow. Did you hear those words? I did. You personally heard them with your, so now I want to be clear because I'm not trying to confuse you. Did you hear them when you were on the ski no. slope? No. Uh, okay. And Ramon did not do anything to try to set the record straight at that point. Do you know anything about that? About who hit me? Correct. When we got down into the into at the that medical point care. was yeah. my question yeah. on the mountain yeah. on the mountain, but in the shed I was okay you said your skis were on after the collision. do you recall your head being downhill or yeah. uphill absolutely downhill. I was going down and absolutely so several witnesses say the opposite, and you it's disagree I disagree absolutely because I couldn't get up and where was uh, Gwyneth's head Gwyneth's head when she came to arrest, head have, down, head I, up. I have no idea. As far as I know, she didn't exist. Because you didn't see anything? I was out. I had no idea. Everything else is what I heard. Did you tell Eric Christensen, according to his report, that she appeared right in front of me? Yes or no? No. No. So he just Never. made that up? Must have. Deer because Valley just uh, uh, falsified a record. Is that your opinion? I never would have said that. I knew where it came from. You know you sued Deer Valley in this claim, true? Yes, yes. Objection to your own relevance? Sustained. And we're not dealing with any of that today. True? We're not dealing with... Objection, relevance, move to strike. Sustained. The The question is stricken and the jury should disregard. So, Your Honor, I just want to be able to ask if, if you're willing, is you're not suing Deer Valley today. Your Honor, objection, third objection now, move to strike again. Sustained, stricken, okay. disregard, please. I hear you saying you were going, you were flying through the air after she hit you. Did you say those words? Yes Today? Or, yes or no? Today? Today. Today I did. With regard to um, relationships prior, you had two divorces, true? I did, yes. And then uh, was it about 10 years of just dating various different other women? I guess I wouldn't know exactly. Wouldn't be unreasonable, maybe. Well, I'm just saying if the act incident occurred in 2016, when was your second divorce? About 30, 10 years earlier. Years I'm thinking 30 years ago, I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, uh, it's nice that C Carleen, you had found a nice partner, but uh, you were not engaged. Is that true? We were not. And she was had. actually living hundreds of miles away from you? We went back and forth. It's three hours. 
four hours maybe the most. A couple of hundred miles, I think, isn't it? I don't know. St. George. We'll let it. We'll move on. Thank you. Do you recall saying uh, that you agreed that saying I'm famous was a crazy thing to say? Agree? Absolutely, it's not me. It's, I'm, don't buy into that. But it was you, right? Just to right. be clear. When you say it wasn't me, it, it was in fact you. It's the other personality that's inhabiting my body right now. And you blame Gwyneth Paltrow for that? Yes. No question. Do you recall having a kind of a stroke event like 10 years or so before the incident? Yeah, but that diagnosis has been changed. But it's an ischemic retinal occlusion? Probably due to a migraine. And you lost your right eye in that? I lost some vision in that eye, yes. And uh, that was one of the reasons you, re you retired? One of many. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in terms of your anger. Uh, do you agree you sought therapy for anger management about 10 years ago? I don't. Or 15 years ago. I guess 06, about the time of your uh, second divorce. Because if you I deny it, we're going to pull it up. I don't remember that purpose, but it, yes, I, okay. Was I seeing a shrink or... So, you can't ask me questions, unfortunately. Sorry, thank you. All I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have you say yes or no, and then we go to documents if we need to. So, do you agree that you were seeing a therapist at the VA for anger management about 10 years, even before the incident? Only, I honestly don't remember it, but if you say so, I, I, I believe you. Yeah, I can't testify. Uh, so, if you I dispute it, then we go to the record. I and don't look at these records. I have it. 5,000 pages. So you don't dispute it? I don't. Okay. And did you tell Shay that there was a GoPro recording? Absolutely not. Do you recall at the exact time of this event <clears throat> going down the hill you were sort of crossing over to the right. Does that sound accurate? No. You were always on the right? Yes. Okay, Christensen is going to testify this, at, uh, this afternoon, so we'll talk about that. And um, do you agree in the five seconds or so before the collision, there was a female skier, kind of beginner-ish, on your left? Yes. And do you agree that you actually tilted your head to the left to sort of confirm that you weren't going to hit her, that she would be okay. After the accident? Five seconds before the before, accident. Before, no. Did you so testify ever? I, I saw her. What I, re, what I, I don't know. What so, I remember is I always saw her. She was a little uncomfortable, and I gave her a little more room, just kind of what you do. And did Passing you, on your right? And did you hit? Did you turn because of your uh, right eye is blind? No. Did you turn toward her? No reason to. Look, you did not. No. Okay, we'll pull that up in uh, probably at our next visit. You texted about Whitney, the toboggan person. How? how happy you were with her, true? I did, yes, give her and, full credit. And we've both read it, it's pretty articulate, pretty detailed, right? It is. You knew you were being subjected to a brain test, like a memory test. Well, I'm not, okay, go ahead. Right, didn't, didn't you tell us that? When she said, I want you to remember some things. Yes, oh yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, you knew you were, you were being subject to a brain oh, memory yeah, test. I've never focused so hard. And you came through with flying colors, right? I did. You them all? I did. Remember President Trump said they gave me five things to remember and I got them all. Do you remember this? I don't, I don't pay attention. I'm sustained. 
You called her a sweetheart, and that she entertained you. And that was all really within a half hour of the incident, a half hour of the collision. Is that true? I don't remember the time frame. Uh, Carly may have been there by then. I don't know. She was helpful. But it was at the base where the toboggan went down to. Yes. That was, uh, that wasn't, well, tell me, is that at the bottom of Deer Valley, or is that a mid-level mid clinic? Mid-level, I think. I think it was mid-level. All right. And is there, so, is there a picture of you two in a wheelchair smiling? Do you remember that picture? I haven't seen it. Ever? I don't remember seeing it, no. Shay mentioned it, that there was a picture of you, and maybe it was at the Instacare. Do you remember anyone, any, any picture of you in the Instacare in a wheelchair smiling? No, I don't. Okay, and I asked you about it, and you said, I just smiled because they told me... Uh, if somebody says smile. Someone said smile, and you smiled. I don't does this ring a bell from your deposition? It does not. I okay. But that's so you took a picture of Whitney, right? I did. Composed that very nice email with all the details, and then you sent it to your group. Probably. I don't say I composed it. I it could have had Carlene help. She may have been there then. And that's well, you did it though, right? You you came up with those exact words. Carlene didn't do that. I may have helped her. Well, she doesn't know she grew up in Michigan, that she's uh, won the Deer Valley Collision, or the Deer Valley Grand whatever <laughs> race, right? That's right. All right. She doesn't know that. Do you think Carlene was present at the Deer Valley Clinic? I, I know she, no, she wasn't at the Deer Valley Clinic, no, absolutely oh, not. Okay. No. Was I, when, when we got I home. misunderstood. She her. was on her way. Do you remember Carlene didn't buy into this? Was that your quotes in terms of your... Uh, did you say those words just like an hour or two ago? Carlene didn't buy into what, Mr. Owens? Do you remember saying those words? She wasn't buying into this? What was the question? It was uh, why your relationship with her deteriorated after the collision. I, I misspoke. I absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I'm not sure I understand it. Okay. To be be clear on that issue, and I realize I'm jumping around, but I'm keeping an eye on the clock. Did you, um, with regard to Carlene? It sounds like you shut it down. You shut the relationship down. Is that true? I made a very strong statement that she was going to be better off without me. Yes. And you told her that? Yes. So Carlene was here a couple days ago and said, I, I, he never told me. Did you tell her? I, I had no idea I why. I told her what I said. What I said, what I, what I thought I said was, Carlene, I, you got to run. I don't want you stuck with me. And I know you would stay by me. I know she would. So your next, then you started calling your daughters, it sounds like, even before the I'm famous thing. Is that true? I don't remember that, honestly. Uh, Shay said she took a call from you about six something. Okay. So, so about six hours later. Okay. Have you ever read her depositions? No. By the way, or Jenny's? No. I told him I wouldn't. Okay. And they had even expressed, like, hey, Dad, we're, we're kind of concerned because we got to talk about you and how you were growing up and things, and we're, we're kind of concerned that it will hurt your feelings. Do you recall this? I didn't know why, but they knew, I don't remember them telling me that. I just I decided that before. All right, so we got... You're at the clinic. You take a picture. This is at this on on the Deer Valley Hill. You take a picture of Ramon and one of the other skiers, and they're all smiles. Did you know that? Um, boy, that's a little bit. A little bit. I do kind of remember that. Uh -huh. Can you bring up the picture of Ramon? I do. Sure. Yeah. I believe that did happen. And uh, I don't remember them being smiling. Smiles. Okay, we'll, we'll pull it up here. Okay. And do you have the number D? 
I'm going to find it. One second. Move to admit. I think it was. It, if not, no objection. Go ahead. D87 received. Do you remember, and I can give you a hard binder if you want. It looks like the monitor's working. Uh, do you recognize that you took this picture? I recognize a picture, and I probably did take it. All yeah. right. Smile, you know. When you went uh, to the Instacare, uh, do you have a personal memory of that? I really don't. I I, I, didn't, I don't remember if I had an X-ray. Like, okay, I, I think the physician assistant's coming tomorrow, but he wrote no no signs of confusion. Oh. Uh, do you dispute that? No, no I don't. Wasn't there? I, not him. Do you agree that in your post-collision talk with Shay about six hours after the incident, you told her, I'm okay? That would be me. I, my yes. parents didn't find out I was divorced until the last day. I don't want to put them through that misery. I don't share my information. All right. So let me, I think that's a yes, but I'm going to re-ask it because we need to get it clear. At six o'clock, just hours, six hours after the collision, did you tell your daughter Shay, I'm okay? Yes? Yes. Asked and answered. Thank you. I overruled. And then on the hill, on the hill itself, with the accident having occurred just in the prior minutes, do you agree that someone asked you, are you okay? That is absolutely, beyond a doubt, wrong. No one spoke to me when I was needing help. No one stopped. No one. So your testimony is Eric Christensen just sat there and looked at an unconscious man for several minutes. Is that your testimony? Yes. He never said one word to me that I recall. I, maybe when he got me up. So R Ramon, although he did uh, try to change his deposition, did say that at one point you said, I'm okay. Do you dispute it? I dispute it. Now, I never to dispute okay. it, you have to know everything you said, right? Like, I know everything I said, and I didn't say it. Are you saying you have a perfect memory of what you said on that hill just after the collision? Yes or no? I knew. That's I'm, not argumentative. That's not argumentative. O overruled. Yes or no? Um, Say yes or no, please. Question again, please. Yes. Do you agree that uh, you do not have a perfect memory of what you s told others after the, in, in the one, two minutes, three minutes after the collision? Or do you have a perfect memory? Well, that word is so ultimate, perfect. No. Right. The answer would be no, it's not perfect. Okay, so it's possible you said, for instance, Eric Christensen is going to testify, first witness this afternoon, that you told him, I'm okay. Do you dispute it? I dispute it. Okay. I never felt safe and like anybody was there to help me. And then I he, would not have said it. He's about to testify that not only he was there, but a ski patroller duo came over one of them came over and said, do you guys need any help or words to that effect? And that you consulted with R Ramon and then said, no. Do you dispute it? I absolutely would have said no. I never said safe. So I don't want to say what I would have said. I want to know if you remember. I, do you remember that? No, you, okay. I don't remember. In fact, asked. you don't even remember that ski patrollers came by. True. No, I do not remember that. Yeah. Ever. We talked about your right eye, but your left eye also has uh, some, some severe vision loss. Is that true? No. 
Uh, I see 2020 in that eye. Did you have a cataract in that eye? I did. And that cataract's been removed yes. since the ski collision? Yes. Uh, there's a report on February 4, 2015, that his vision in his left eye is decreasing blind in right eye. Was your left eye decreasing one year before the ski collision? Increasing in visual acuity or Sorry. in prescription? Decreasing. Was your left eye decreasing? Yes, getting less need for prescription, but not the visual acuity. Now, in addition to your stroke, you also had a, uh, your heart was not perfect. Do you agree? Before the ski collision? Perfect, of course I couldn't agree with the word perfect, no. Palpitation, you had palpitations, agreed? Had them most of my life. Yeah, no how many years? 40 years probably. And what's the lay term for palpitation? Is it just un um, it's unusual called, um, it's, beat? It's, it's just a little out of sync that happens when I'm really tired or if I've been on the treadmill too long or running too long and hard, then, then it will get a little funny sync. It's called PCVs. So it, your, your beat's off, is that fair to say? Yeah, but it's nothing yeah. I notice. It doesn't change. Okay, and but you are on two different uh, high blood pressure medications. Does that sound right? Yes. And that's because one didn't, one wasn't adequate. You needed both. Well, it, objection relevance. We're going to his, I can explain if you want, Your Honor, but this, this so event later changed. Witness, his, later uh, witnesses that, to which this forms part of their opinion? Sure, his overall health, yes. There's no claim that his, um, his heartbeat or anything was affected by this accident. Your Honor, he says this has utterly changed his life. Yeah, just, just a minute. Um, counsel, would you approach, please?
afternoon recess at this time and return at 1.30. Thank you. May be seated. So, Council, cons consistent with the motion in limine ruling that the court gave at the uh, before trial, um, Mr. Sanderson, you can certainly step down. Uh, there, there's a there, there were it was a laundry list of medical issues, and uh, medical issues, if they're relevant, they absolutely should come in. If they're not relevant, they should not come in. So there will need to be, I mean, I need, I need from you an assurance that this is a conditional relevance uh, situation and, and that you will tie in the relevance later and not just a vague statement from an expert that this guy had a lot of health problems before. I mean, I need to know, uh, it needs to be tied in. So maybe you want to look at the reports or depositions uh, to make sure that whatever it is that you're examining this witness on will be tied in later by a medical expert uh, as to the relevance, either before or after. I mean, either one of those would be relevant. James is sort of on the damages end, so I'll defer to him on the specifics. But we are talking, when they say, it's utterly ruined my life, that's, we're talking about the whole package. And aging is one of the primary, just normal aging is one of the primary issues for our experts. And so uh, we got to look at the whole package, not how about this heart thing and how about this prostate thing and how about this um, where we will argue and our experts will back it is that that's the reason he is kind of slowly deteriorating progressive aging okay so, so take a look at what the opinions will be and if they're if you feel as though they're tied in um, then you can go into those areas Thank you. It seemed like there was one other issue. Okay, I just want to kind of put this on the stand. So I had, I had seven witnesses lined up. I was supposed to take over the case this morning at 9 a.m. Many are out of state. Um, plaintiffs' counsel, I don't dispute everyone's working hard, but it has significantly thrown off my witness list to the point that I'm actually having to cancel witnesses and so that we can read their transcripts. Um, and some people, some of our experts in particular, flying in out of state, I can testify during this small window. And um, I last, as of last night, they were going to be done at 10, then it was 11, and uh, they still haven't rested. I've got delays today because of the weather. True. I I'm, I'm, guess I'm not really blaming people, except for um, I still don't have the case. They're not ready to rest multiple assurances that they were going to rest on Friday. Thank you. Okay. And, and also for the record, the, the court didn't issue an order uh, concerning, you know, when one case one must be rested and one other uh, must be rested. I, I've been leaving it up to counsel to work that out, and I, from my perspective, it looks like uh, everyone's doing the best they can. Everyone's working hard. I don't dispute it, but it, it's hard when I have... Like kids flying in. Understand. Do you want any response to that, or should we just hold our peace? Uh, why don't we take lunch? All right. <laughs> Be back at one thirty. <laughs> and you're uh, you're getting a printout for the amount of trial time that's been used so far. Yes. As soon as we get to a working printer. <laughs> 